1.82 miles an hour. The disc line, this is how hay is cut. I'll show you up underneath the disc line. So back in the day, they used to use a sickle knife. You can tell that's a single blade sickle knife is what they used to use. This is not a single blade sickle knife. This actually uses uh, discs and the blades are mounted on those discs and then they spin and that's what cuts the grass, the alfalfa, the clover, whatever it is that you're cutting in the hay field. And then those black rollers, they're crimpers. So it sends it through there and crimps the stalk, whatever it is again that you're, you're cutting. The purpose of crimping that stalk though is to decrease drying time. So we want to be able to dry it down as quickly as possible, get it off the ground and get it baled. And then the other advantage of a disc line like this or a hay conditioner is that it windrows it for you then. Um, and then we will either leave it in that windrow and then rake it if it dries really quickly. Or a lot of times we, if we're really pushing it, we will use what's called a tetter and the tetter spreads out the hay um, so it can dry faster. It's all about surface area. And so when you spread that windrow out, you have more area that can then be drying faster. Finished product after the field has been mowed with the hay conditioner, it's in rows. We could bale it just like that, but actually we typically come through with the tutter, which is what you see here that is used to spread the rows out so that it can dry down quicker. Here you can see raking, we're putting it back into the rows to where we can then be ready to bale. Finished product with all the rows, you can see the round baler in the distance. And this works out great except for when you get high winds and it'll come through and actually destroy your rows and you have to go back through with a rake to then rake up what the wind has blown so that you can bale it and get it off the field. Let's start by talking about small square baling. You'll notice where the hay enters into the baler. And then if you look at that plunger up top, it is moving or feeding the hay into the elongated part of the baler to where it is forming a rectangular bale. Notice then behind the baler, we use something called an accumulator system where eight bales are fed into that accumulator and then when there are eight, they are released. I'll give you a view of the cab, what it looks like in my seat. You run right alongside that row to make sure that you are properly feeding in the hay. Now inside of that baler, this is the compartment that actually is forming the bale. It plunges it into squares um, or little chunks that you can then feed. The back of the baler, that's the knotting system. So how it ties the knots for the bales and then it comes out of the baler into that accumulator system. Notice the different chutes. It is all tripped when it fills. And here you can see it in action. Since the accumulator trips with every eight bales, we are left then with stacks across the field of eight bales in each stack. We come through with an attachment hooked onto the skid loader to then move those bales and stack them onto wagons or trailers. Ready for me to lift the 
tailgate. So we just dropped it. And if I come back to my screen, I'm gonna lower that tailgate. It's gonna go back to 30. And we're ready to start again. One of my favorite parts of farming with my family is that we get to work together to complete the tasks at hand. It truly is a way of living. And sometimes you just have to make miniature sized versions to help get the little ones involved too.